Hello and welcome to the program. Today, the 4th of February 2009, the country celebrates 61 years of independence, a day that is significant to each and every Sri Lankan, although in different ways. It is a time when we have seen drastic developments in almost every sphere in life. And on today's program, we talk to a cross-section of individuals from two generations to find out their views on how they see the country has changed since gaining independence in 1948. events of 61 years ago, when Sri Lanka gained independence from the British, was something the younger generation learnt about through the pages of their history books. But how relevant is it to their lives today? On today's program, I am talking with Dinidu Dialwis, Melanie Bamunasingha and Sachit Vidhanapathirana to find out their views on the significance of Independence Day. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Dinidu, you are part of a generation born well into the post-independence era. Does the annual celebration of independence from colonial rule hold any kind of special significance to you personally? Uh, if you look at, for me, for me, the celebration of independence so far has been something to, it, it gives you a sense of belonging as you know, you, you, there, there, there's a glorious history of this country and, and it, 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 it's, a, it's a representation of what, what the country has achieved since, since uh, we gained independence. And that has what it's been so far. But as to um, as to what it what it would mean now, it it in a way it's kind of disappointing because you see what's you see how far you could have progressed, and you see how you see how far you actually have progressed, and in that sense, it's a bit you start to question: Do I really need to celebrate? Is there something that I really can celebrate here? And what do you think, Melanie? Uh, well, I think that um, as a, you know belong to the youth, um, independence have much, hasn't played any significant role as such. We watch it on TV, we have a holiday, but we have heard it from our grandparents and we know how important it has been. And I realized that if we, weren't, we haven't been under colonial rule, then we wouldn't have developed, our country wouldn't have developed so far, we would have been far behind. So I feel that in that way, uh, being under colonial rule has been a positive thing, but since then, uh, being an independent country also had played its part, so yeah. Okay, and uh, Sachit? Uh, for me, being a young person who's born very far away from the Independence Day from, from 1948, I never saw the era, saw, the, saw Sri Lanka, which was under colonial rule. So I don't know how better off we are right now. I get only the second-hand information. But for me, one thing is very important. That is the fact that I can choose my own government and the fact that I can vote for it is very important for me. Other than that, personally, Independence Day is not something of very of much of a significance to me. In your view, Sachit, uh, what are the important legacies of the con colonial rule? Uh, one of them is the legal system, even though it's not perfect, but uh, that is something that uh, we cannot do without. Uh, there's obviously there should be improvements after that that would have been done after 1948. Nevertheless, that is very important to us. Uh, secondly. Uh, the infrastructure, uh, the road systems, the railway systems, they, those are these, these systems have been helping us in the development of this country. Even though we have not progressed since 1948. And thirdly, is the university systems. We, we used to have a very good university systems. Now it is going down. Nevertheless, that is one important legacy that British has given us. The, the chance for me to select the person who governs the country, because 
say prior to uh, prior to colonization by different parties and I would go to say 1505 where you know there was a there was a system of monarchy where there was an ultimate decider who decides this is what's going to happen if you you know disagree with me or if you try to go against me you know I will get rid of you and there was that kind of system so after the, after the whole period of the Portuguese and the Dutch coming in and then after 1815 when the English took over and you know we were we were under a monarch for a certain time but once that the representative system of governance came in people in this country were given the chance saying you know it, it, it the, the right to decide who rules the country was recognized and I think in a way it's kind of sad where we have moved from that so we have had a monarchy we have moved to a system where it was semi-democratic and the ideal situation should have been it moving on to a very pluralistic representative system but I feel to a certain extent that we are either stagnating at the whole democratic process or at times going back on to uh, constitutionally enforced monarchy. So, um, I want to exemplify a point actually before independence uh, what we heard is that the country was under oppression that nobody was able to take their own decision everything was decided for them and they didn't have their individual choice. And now, even amidst of all the problems we're facing, the world economy, standard living, I feel that we still have a certain party making our choices, and that's, I think, a great improvement.